to the medical facilities. And what would happen? Stephanie, what is a BMed provider? And then this is Kathy. We only have another minute or two. I'm sorry for the technical okay. problems, but we have, B- we have some questions. Sure. A behavioral medicine provider is a BMed provider. Um, so we introduced the services gradually. And as I mentioned before, there's many positive results, both for the patient and the provider, um, that the providers experience um, just the rewards of the immediate effect of intervention, because um, there was something they could do with each patient. The patients found the services. They reported them to be helpful and empowering, that they left with something they could do um, that day or just think about to improve their emotional or general mental health and physical health. Um, we actually were uh, requested to provide services in our suburban sites, uh, we have four different sites, um, which is great, but it's also a challenge because we don't have the resources to do that right now. Um, we're not being fully uti- utilized, unfortunately, in the downtown office. We're seeing two to three patients um, when the goal is eight to ten. Our goal eventually is to have a, a building that houses all services, which will help us to um, lead to more fully integrated care. And that's what I have. So, Kathy, you know, like... <laughs> You Thank you very more. much, Stephanie. Uh, You're welcome. I apologize for the, the technical problems and um, look forward to answering some questions. We do have a few questions that have been typed in, and then, Alex, I'm going to take a few questions and then turn it back to you for a summary. And one of the first questions actually would go to Trina and Alex. It was, are grant dollars available for a behavioral health organization to start a medical primary care practice in a community behavioral health site? And I think, Trina, that's a question that came in while you were talking about the uh, primary Care Behavioral Health Initiative Grants, and then, Alex, you may want to respond to that with the new initiatives as well. Um, sure. This is Trina with SAMHSA. Um, we don't actually have any funds for awarding new primary and behavioral health care integration grants right now. Who knows what will happen? We're always hoping we'll get more money so that we can award more grants. Um, I would definitely, I, in Alex's slides, he included a link to the SAMHSA grants page, and I would definitely um, take a look at that because that's updated. You'll, you'll see if we do end up having a new grants program, um, that would be where you would find that out if there was going to be another uh, round of applications. What I will say, though, is that I encourage um, folks who are who are interested in this work to get in touch with the Center for Integrated Health Solutions, um, and you can get to that website through the National Council's website. Um, that's a resource for you to get information on a whole variety of different things. Um, it's not funding, <laughs> per se, but it is um, it is technical assistance, and it could be in the form of information or training or, or a variety of different things. So um, in, in the meantime, but while we don't know about for further funding, I would definitely take advantage of the, the Center for Integrated Health Solutions. This is Alex. Just 